Hi, it's Alicia Stringer here. I'm ready to take your business to the next level. Here I am with in Texas at 2asuccessstreamblog.com. We're going to go through the Internet and Lead Generation Boot Camp with me, Alicia Stringer. Here we are on day three, a 3.0 level boot camp. It's about the third time I've updated this boot camp. Um, keep adding more new information. It's awesome. A little bit about myself. I am a dedicated Christian wife, mom, love to teach music, piano, I teach voice, and kinder music. And I started network marketing when I was, um, had my little girl, uh, about six months old, we had just moved to Georgia, and lost my whole, whole studio and had to start all over. And it takes a while to build up a new um, local studio, people learn who you are, your name, and getting out there in a small town and really couldn't find enough um, students to bring in the income we needed. So I looked online and knew that there could be a way it can happen. So I just don't give up and know that it is possible people can do this and just to keep making it happen. So I'm here to encourage you to not give up that um, there is a way for you to generate income automatically online. Um, not through a hoax, through a real business. <laughs> not my, you know, job either. You're creating your own own business. That's why we're creating this boot camp. Who is this boot camp for? You're you're wanting to build your own business, your own income online. So you really need to learn how a business funnel really works online. Learn those best basic traffic generation skills so people can find you, so you can learn to dominate those search engines and continue to rank where people can continue to find you. Um, you ought to want to automate this business on autopilot where you can either outsource it and you're not having to always work on your business, work in your business, but you work on it to make it better and improve. <clears throat> so the goals of each day we've gone through, we've gone through already day one, what type of business is best to build online, um, a way a profitable business is set up, and now day three, okay. Diving in to efficiency and social media and organization setup. And next we're going to go through that basic keyword research you need to know and some of those traffic strategies we need to go dominate. <coughs> so day three, here we go. Some efficiency in social media and organizing your business on the computer, online. We're going to go through how you organize your different browser, your internet browsers that you're going to use. You're going to organize your email. I recommend you get Gmail. And we're going to learn how to organize your email so it becomes more efficient for you. We're going to set up a Google Voice account. Set up for your business. Now this Google Voice account can go into any phone you would like. Makes it more professional. And set up your calendar where you can make sure you're able to connect with people that you need to talk to. You can set that up with tungle.me, however you want to put it. I'll just kind of suggest using that one and show you some of the tricks of how it works. And go through organizing all your social media in something like Hootsuite so you can see all of it at once. <coughs> set up your Skype um, so you can connect with people online. Um, there's tons of different chat channels that you can connect with more people that way. And be sure to add me. That's my Skype ID, Alicia.Stringer. So first, take some notes. Write these down. for your. We're going to go through Google Chrome. Um, I used to use Firefox. <coughs> you can have the plugins for that as well. But it seems like more and more, um, as people are checking out the different browsers and how they work for their business, that Chrome is now the the fastest <coughs> browser that you can use, more efficient. So they have little extensions to come up to help your business run smoother. So we're going to go through and find Page Rank Checker, SEO Quake, Chrome Flag, Google Global, RSS Description, LastPass, Ystamp, oh, and I like Check All. I'll show you how to use those. Okay, so first of all, let's go find the page rate checker. I'm going to just copy that. And we're going to go to the browser. So hold on a minute while I bring it up. Okay, so here we are in Google. And let's see, sometimes I can write extensions. Page rate checker extension. <coughs> so 
see what comes up. Okay, here we are. I'll make this a little bigger. We need the Chrome extensions right here. So you click on that. I'm just going to make this bigger. Just thinking about it. When you get the extensions, you will notice them at the top of the right hand side of the browser here. You're going to see all these different extensions. And this one, the Cuba Page Rank Checker, is going to show you what the page rank is for that specific website. So let's go ahead and Cuba Page Rank. It's not the exact one I'm thinking of, but I think this one will work. <coughs> You add it to Chrome, and then on the bottom, it shows you, are you sure you want to add this? I press continue, and it installs it. <coughs> now you see on the top right hand side, it's added right here, the page rank. So now you see the page rank checker on there. Okay. Next we have... <coughs> Our next <coughs> one we have is SEO Quake. I like this one. I already have it installed, I think. Let's copy. Go back over to browser. Let's search the extensions. Let's go back to Google. SEO Quake. Um, it came in, but let's see if we can put in an extension and see if something comes up different. <coughs> okay, let's look at the results. SEO extension for Mozilla, that's for Firefox. SEO Quake for Chrome, I believe that's in, that's what we need. We have many different ways to, you, can, you can use this. The SEO Quake you see over here, install now. Click on that. Same thing will show up on the bottom. Are you sure you want to use it? Continue. You can access it. Install. Now it is installed up here. And you will see the SEO quick right here. And what this does is you can see it in different ways, different other search engines on how that page is ranking. Compare it using your results. I don't really care about seeing all that. Yandex. Mainly one is Google, Yahoo, Bing, um, the popular ones. Okay, and what this does is you can see this little tab right here. This is the SEO Quake you work in. It's a page rank of four, and generally when you're looking for competition um, the higher the rank is the harder to rank in there. And so you want to, when you're trying to compete against different websites, you know it will be easy if it's a lower page rank. And it will show you the different ranking on the different search engines, like here's Yahoo and Bing, show the Alexa ranking how old this website is. It was created in 2006. Um, looking for the source from Google, Chrome, and the density, and how many backlinks it has going toward this website. So it shows you all right there. And when you do not want to use it, you just click the little X button and it goes up. And sometimes it messes up the way the page is shown if you have that up there. You can just X it out if you don't want to use it. But it's good to have helpful in your kind of keyword research that we will do a little later. Okay, so let's go and look at the next one. Okay, so here we are. Let's see the ultimate Chrome flag. Copy. Let's go to Google. Again, and search for it. Oops. Control V. And Extension. 
use the ultimate chrome fly extension. It displays the country or region name, um, geography, the Google page rank, Alexa rank. So this will show you what country the website is from. Okay, so here's the step-by-step -step instructions on how to download it. Ultimate Chrome flag. That's where you need to go. And just download now. Okay. I think I already have it, so I'm not sure if it will come in there. Here's the Google, the Chrome Web Store. Uh, if you want to search it in there as well, so you can find it. Um, developer tools. I think that's it. Um, what it does is it shows you up here where the country is, so it shows the country in there. Um, usually this is where I find it. Extensions, an extension down here. Let's search for it again. Oops. JS error. So I don't think that's it. Developed for JavaScript. I don't think that's it. Login, developer tools. And you can just go shopping in here in the Chrome list and see what other amazing ones you find. We'll be using Google Voice. That's a fun one. <clears throat> so you can add that one to Chrome. So now you have Google Voice added. You can even call it from your computer using that. Okay. Um, usually these are in productivity to help you out. And if you don't find it, it's not that that important. Just to kind of so you know where if you're talking to the U.S. or different countries, it helps. Okay. But using Google Global kind of the same way here. <clears throat> see if I can move it up so you can see how I'm doing. Google Global, I'm searching for it. There it is by Red Fly. And you can tell that um, I've already added this. Oh, you torrent's pretty neat too. Okay, so I've added this to Crump to um, to the crown, and I think you can see it. Where would it be? Let me say that's still it. Okay, so it says the geo, the page rank, and all the different trends on it. This is it too. You know, SEO status. Oh, that's my Bitly. That's a good one. Um, Shareaholic, Band Pepper, one of the ones, too many tabs. <laughs> um, Google Plus, and there's your tools. Okay, so let's see what other extensions you can have that will help you out. RSS feed extension. Copy that. Let's go back to Google and find it. Let's get the list over for you. Right here, you've seen I've added it. And what this one does is where you can add an easy um, way to put the RSS feed in there. Um, where is that? That link in there. I'll show you in here. RSS feed reader. <coughs> where all you have to do is click that to put your RSS feed. Or if you want to subscribe to someone's blog, it'll be all in one place in there for you. So it will show you exactly one click to subscribe to people's websites. And so you can see them all in one place. Okay, so it should have that RSS feed up there. Since I have um, this flag, mine doesn't show up here on the, the um, RSS feed. 
Um, let me add this one. Google Reader, RSS feed subscriber. So you might find different ones that you might like. Okay. Let's see the next one. Last pass. This will save you a bunch of time. I've seen people spend hours on their passwords or at least five or ten minutes just looking for that last, last password. Last pass. And it, it's very high um, in, in security. So you, you don't have to worry about you know people hacking into it. I've added it in here. And it stores all of your passwords into a vault. So the only password you need to know is to get into pass, last pass, and it'll store all your passwords. Like I have multiple ones for Gmail, multiple ones for YouTube, multiple ones for Facebook, and it'll know all your different accounts and it will automatically log you in. So like for example, you know I wanted to log into AWeb, I gotta send something in real fast. It's going to pull up automatically my login name, password. It's ready. All you have to do is click to log into your account. Boom. How fast was that? You don't even have to type it down. So I encourage you to get LastPass, especially if you're going to create a lot of different social media accounts, etc. Um, very helpful in saving you a bunch of time. And the Y stamp is easy on the signature in your Gmail or in your AWeber that you want to create. It makes it professional looking. There's several different ones and you can use whichever one you want. Just, you know, to create a, create a, um, a signature where it has all your social media accounts. Put your blog in there. You can have a little quote. You know, just customize it. Put your picture on it however you want. So you can see I've logged in my Y stamp is that what it looks like up here. And you just click on it and what I do is I click on edit in order to put in AWeber. And here you can customize it with the HTML, put whatever picture on, where you know, whatever you want to say. And then you can add all these different icons in here with social media, music, I mean there's just tons of stuff. Um, keep it pretty simple in there. And what I do is I preview it, and whatever it's in there, I just highlight it all. Sometimes it doesn't highlight quite right. Um, highlight that in the picture. Right click and copy it all, and it will go right into um, AWeber in the HTML section. And I just add that in real quick to all my emails. So let's say I want to click um, make a broadcast message real quick and it'll have my signature or if you want to just save the signature and header file <coughs> in there just so you have a message that's ready you go ahead and um, put in your signature in there um, I copied it so now I'm pasting it in here and your signature is ready okay so all I have to do is insert your your message in there and then you just save that and then you have a little template or a signature file ready for your account. Okay, so it's still loading and saving. Um, so now you have that header, and you just go in there and um, copy it, because you want to keep that header in there. Copy it to make a new message out. Okay? Next Google Chrome extension is Check All copy this one. This one can be very efficient in checking a lot of lists in the um, Twitter or Facebook. Um, I've noticed it's just helped me on efficiency that way. Um, I've heard Evernote is really good too. Just writing some notes, quick notes. Um, check all. I have a different one. This one might work too. Let's add this one. Um, there's several different ones that will work. Uh, which one did I add? I added the Google Chrome, the Google Plus button. Like the SEO. And then SEO is probably pretty good, but I like the SEO Quake. Check them all. I think this is, this is the one I use. 
Um, this other one might work too. Check all. Um, and uncheck all. Um, restricts checks to a particular element. Um, you can add both of them. I don't know. Let's just test them out, both out. That's what this one will look like. You can install it. It's now installed. So now there's your check all button. Give it some stars or something. Okay, so now at the top, I've noticed it has check all. What I like to use this for, this is a quick Twitter, or if you're inviting people to a group and you've got all those people in, in Facebook. Um, untweets is what I use it mostly on. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sign in and use it real quick, but um, yeah, because I've already used all on my notes, but it's um, I'm going to have to change accounts or something. Um, where it, it gives you all the people who have untweeted and you can do it that way. Um, it, at check it all. When you're going to create an event and you want to check all of the people in your Facebook account of all your friends, you can just have those highlighted and then check all the people, check all of them, and check all, you know, it has those different options in there. Okay, so it just it makes it more efficient if you're trying to invite all your friends to go to something or do something more efficient <coughs> and they won't allow you to, you have to click on every single one to check them all. <laughs> so that that's a little cute tip there. Um, next on the list is, that's all for our extensions. Woohoo, we got our extensions all efficiently ready. Next is our Gmail account. We need to make sure we are efficient in our email and we're not spending hours in our email every day. So we need to filter our folders and make it personal to business. Um, we're going to show how to use that plus sign to filter emails as well. And you can customize the signature and Y stamp in your email as well. So let's go to a Gmail account. I want to show you one that I don't use all the time. So this one needs some organization help. Okay, so I haven't used this one in a while. Um, so the first thing, I want to try to switch to the new look and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the new look. <coughs> I've had this account for a while, so I guess it's time to upgrade it. <laughs> and when you switch to upgrade look, you can make it into different themes. Uh, that makes it more fun to look at if you want to do that fancy stuff. If not, just keep it clean. Do whatever you want. Um, I don't think I want to do this right now. Okay, so we are in here in the new look so you know how it looks like. What it looks like I have um, some old List Joe messages in here. And this was an, a way to email um, people on this list. It was a safe list. And so let's say I want to make sure I just want um, people, I just, I don't want to see those. I want to make sure they're red and I don't want to put those anymore. So I may have to go to the old look in order to do this. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can be efficient in this. You can select all those or you can go into settings. Hold on, it's over here now. Different settings. Okay, and the settings is where you do everything. You can label what comes in your inbox. Okay, so let's say we have a lot of list shows coming in. List that label under um, I want it. Let's show. Just create the, the list. Let's show. Okay. So now we have the list show. And we want to, you know, show, hide, or remove it. You can put in different ways of how you want to see the list show messages. Okay. We haven't selected any into the conversation yet. So let's go back into our inbox and put them in under that label. 
There they are. Now you want to move them to Liz Joe. Okay? So now we see them in here. We don't see them anymore because they're all in the Liz Joe message. Actually, they show up underneath here. If you want to see those again, you go back to um, right here. There's your Liz Joe messages. There they go. So that was the arrow down, the options, and they were right here. Okay, and you can have your different lists that you want to go to. Um, so like if you want to just look at your leads, you just go to there, look at your leads. I use a lot of the search button up here to search for different things because I don't really delete any of my emails, so they're all there and I can go find them. Um, another way in the settings is to um, filter out emails. So let's look at the filters. And you can create a new filter if it's from Liz Joe subject line. It usually has Liz Joe in there. Or if it has the words Liz Joe. And then you can create a filter with that. Okay? So you just create the filter and you want to mark all these as red because you don't want to read all these. You know, you just want to see what's important. And you can even forward these to a different address that has this filter in it. You can uh, go ahead and delete it. <laughs> you know, diff do different things that you want to do for this. You know, automatically start it, skip the inbox where you don't even see it, you just archive it. Okay, and then you can create the filter. And now the filter is already created, so whenever new List Joe messages come in, they're going to just be marked as red. Um, another tip that I use is I forward all my different email accounts to one email account. And so you may, if you have several different accounts, you may want to do that as well when you create different accounts for different things. Okay? And if you're able to chat, there's just, do everything in here under the settings. Okay? So that's a way to create your Gmail account more efficient. And I think Yahoo is pretty similar. If you're just stuck, you really like Yahoo. You know, it's the same way on there. Okay. Um, there is a way in the settings for you to automatically set um, e uh, signatures in. And mine is right here. So you can go ahead and set your signature in there um, as well. If you can see all that. And save that. Save the changes. Okay, so, and you can have an autoresponder into your email. So when someone sends you an email, you can turn this vacation autoresponder on and send them a message right back. Say, I did get your message. It's going to be a couple days till I can get to it. Um, if you want to connect with me sooner, have that way. You know, there's different ways that people use this vacation autoresponder. Okay. Um, the, the plus button, let's say you are wanting to subscribe to a guru's um, list, or maybe your own list. <coughs> um, let's say you go to my website, 2asuccess.com, <coughs> and you need to enter an email account, and you want to know, um, you know all the different ones that you're entering. So you would put in your regular email account for Gmail, but you would put in a plus and say, I just want to test this page or something. Because see, I've done that several times. I've tested the page or whatever. And then you put at gmail.com. Now this creates a little kind of tagline to your email. It will still work. And you can filter that um, message out a lot easier. So now let's test it and make sure it works. You have free to access what what you're getting is it the right video, okay? And or you can do that to different gurus, people's different lists that you want to get on, <coughs> okay? And that will show up into your inbox of what um, account that plus mail that you did. Um, let's see, was there something else on that Gmail? Customize the signature with Y stamp. 
and we filtered our folders and we used that plus sign to filter out emails as you are subscribing to different lists or you're testing your own websites out. That's the way I use the plus filter. Set up the Google Voice. We saw that there is a Chrome feature of Google Voice and um, so let's go to that where um, you click on that and set up your account. <coughs> See, this account of Gmail does not have a Google Voice number, and you can just click on that and get your Google Voice number. You can have it forwarded to the phone number that you use, home phone or cell phone, whatever you want, and you can have it where um, you can tag it where you have to make sure people put in their name before they connect with you. If they miss you, it goes right to your email account. There's lots of functions that the Google Voice has. And I love the recording feature. When someone calls you on this Google Voice number, all you have to do is press the number 4, and it records the phone call. Now, if you dial out, you have to make sure you are dialing out through your Gmail account, through the voice number that you have, and make sure you press the record button. Okay? So that's the two features of recording the phone call as well. That can be very powerful. I use that with interviews in um, different ways and to your business to make videos and etc. I love that. So it's an easy function. That's free, you know, to um, make a very powerful message into your um, account. So that is the Google Voice that I recommend you use. Let's go back into a um, boot camp and see if there's anything else. So I talked about you can screen callers that can put in their name. You set up a customized number that can go toward your number so that people don't have to learn what your phone number is. They just learn what the Google Voice number is and they don't even have to know your regular phone number. So in case that you happen to drop your cell phone into the pool and you lose that phone number, you can automatically switch that Google Voice number to another phone until you can get a new number and people don't even have to know that you got a new phone number or your phone dropped in the pool or lost it or anything. They still have that Google Voice number and it's gonna, all your messages going to go to your email and you know there's just tons of ways that um, a Google Voice number is very um, highly professional in there and they don't even have to know your personal cell phone number that you created or your home number um, in there and you can catch a lot of spam that way, especially on the internet. Nowadays, our people are scraping phone numbers <laughs> and call out, calling automatically. It's crazy. Okay, and organize your email box um, as well. We've gone through filters and labels and forwarding and signatures and recording calls. Okay, so now you should be all organized in your Gmail account and your Google Voice account and your Chrome. <clears throat> so let's talk about your calendar, how to be efficient in your day. This is going to be set up with Google Calendar using Tungle.me. So let's go over and create an account there. Go up to the browser. I want to keep Gmail open, so I'm going to open up another one. No, we're done with this one. Okay, so this is the Tungle.me website, and it's free to use. You just sign up to be a member. You can schedule meetings anywhere um, because you set it up through your Google Voice. You can set it up your phone. It I don't know if it has an app. I think they might have an app. I haven't done the app thing. Um, but just become a member. You just sign in. Um, let me go to my account. Um, I'm not sure if I can go to my account because I'm not logged in. I think it's Alicia Stringer up here, if you can see that. Okay, so here's my account. I've customized it. I put my, phone, my picture in there. Um, you can click and propose two meeting times for me. Ooh, this is Thanksgiving week and I haven't put on not available <laughs> all day. <laughs> That's funny. I guess just I just haven't put anything in there. I'm not available. Don't call me on Thanksgiving, please. <laughs> Anyways, um, you can schedule a meeting, so you can check a couple of boxes, and you just paint. Oh, I'm available this time. Let's do a 15-minute session here, and maybe I'll be available over here. 15 minutes, you know. Um, so you can 
put in those times or I'm not available, go into the next week, and you can schedule that meeting from this website. This is how your prospects can schedule time to talk with you or um, however you want to use it. And the um, put their, your customized um, information in there, your phone number, email, website, and connect with you on this page as well. So it can make very efficient and the calendar is in sync with the calendar you use in Gmail. So if you go back to Gmail and you click at the top calendar, it will set you up a whole calendar here. And you can just type in, say I have a meeting at this time, you just create that event and put it in there. And with the events, you can um, invite other people to that event as well. Um, I don't use it as that function very much because that gets personal and um, you can people have to exit all those if they can't get it to it. So make sure that you have confirmed with them maybe before you set the event that you're connecting with them on the, the same Google Calendar. So you don't just go spam everybody with your calendar inviting people to different events um, or not use it in that function. Um, other ways I use the calendar, it has some agenda and tools over here as well that you can use. Sometimes I don't use these quite as more than I think I could use them. It go ahead and gives you the, the different um, holidays in there. Um, there's more things. I think there's a tab where you can, you can print your calendar, where you can put in some to-do list and stuff in here, um, which makes it kind of neat in there. Okay, so I'm looking at your calendar. And it hooks up and sync it right with your Tungle.me account. So you don't have to go through your Tungle.me and mark the same events, you know, going through different two different calendars. We want to make it efficient where everybody knows, um, can connect with you um, on the calendar that you're using all the time. Okay, and I think it can sync with different types of calendars, maybe Yahoo or something uh, that you're using online as well. Okay, so we've got our Google Calendar allows people to schedule time that you're meeting or by phone and you can put the task on the calendar so you can get completed. <coughs> I don't know if I showed that. Let me go back and see. Calendar. Let's see if it's in the more. No. Um, calendar settings. Um, there's the settings, um, calendars, mobile setup, labs, um, create, add a quick add, my calendar, other calendars, Um, if I find it, and um, I'll let you know, because I just don't use it that much for the tip. I would rather use a little notepad file and put in my task or handwrite them. Um, but you can schedule that out on having different tasks to do. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we have our Tungle.me account. Let's go to the most overwhelming task of organizing your social media. Okay, I know you stuck with me this long. You can do this. Let's go to Hootsuite. Now, don't get too overwhelmed. This is going to show you my multiple, multiple accounts and these different accounts. You want to make sure you have a Twitter account. Um, Ping.fm will include Twitter and different bookmarking sites, I think. Um, and then your Facebook profile, pages, groups. Um, MySpace, and we'll have that in there. Hopefully you don't use it, but it's in there. You can do different things with MySpace if you want to. LinkedIn, and just how do you set it up, schedule posts, and how you can track it. And I'm going to add in here, Bitly, <coughs> a way to track your links. Okay? So let's go over to Hootsuite. I'm going to pretend that you already have all these set up. If you don't, Go ahead and stop it now. Go create a Twitter account. Go into ping.fm and create all those accounts. Just, it takes, you know, two to four hours just to create all these accounts. 
And if you haven't created an account in MySpace, I would, I would just leave that off. I would not worry about it. It's not going to get you as much traffic as you think in there, but I do have, have that. <clears throat> so in case you do have it, you know, put it in there and just test it out and see if you get some, some traffic people adding you as a friend or um, trying to connect with you there. Or in the updates, you know. Um, okay, so let's go over to Hootsuite. I'm still on the calendar. <coughs> Hootsuite is spelled kind of how you say it, H O T T T in there. Okay, so now it's loading up and it's probably going to automatically sign me in um, when you have the last pass in there. It's going to show you how to auto log in or auto fill your, your dashboard so you can automatically log, log into your account efficiently. I was just thinking about it. <laughs> And now it's logging me in, so you didn't even see my password or anything in there. It's awesome. Okay, so now it shows you there's that SEO quake toolbar. It really don't matter with who's we, how um, I care about it ranking. But I want to show you, here it has all the tabs of my different accounts of social media. In order to add your social media account, um, you just go into settings and set up your social networks. Okay, and you just put in in your settings of all your Twitter accounts. You just click add social network, connect it with Twitter, you have to make sure you're logged in. And Facebook, LinkedIn, I don't use Foursquare as much, but here's that ping.fm. I think it kind of goes to that if you use that. Foursquare's um in a different country they use that a lot. A WordPress account, MySpace, I don't use Mixie as much either. I don't know if I even have a Mixie account. Okay, so there's some of the popular ones. All right, so that's where you would add those social networks in. And then you can go into your account here, and you will see the home feed of what all your friends are doing, maybe any mentions from your Twitter account, all your mess private messages, and you can pin some tweets out. Have some pending tweets out. I'm put some more value in there. I'm just links. Um, so now you can schedule out some updates. In order to put an update, you use this compose message on top and say um, whatever you want. It's a beautiful. I'm spelling it right. Beautiful day in Texas. The cats are loving watching the birds in the window. <laughs> Alright, so I got a little update. And then you click on here and you can add it in Twitter. Where's my Twitter account? You can add it in social media. The flags are your pages. Um, these little sign here is the groups. Here's LinkedIn. Um, the ping.fm goes to several social networks. And there's MySpace. Okay? You can schedule it out at different times of the dates, different time of the year. And view it. You can attach an image. And you can add a location to it, um, just different things. But I'm going to send it now. Okay, so then it sends it out to these social networks all at once. Makes it more efficient for multiple accounts like that. Um, especially people, you know, if you want to be away, you're not going to be, if you're going to be gone for on vacation or something, and you want to make sure people see your face out there in social media, there is a way for you to schedule out some updates so they can still see what they should be seeing going on in your business or in your life <laughs> if you want to. Um, there is a way, you know, don't want to put too many links be scanning. People that really will like, start ignoring your messages if you put too much like that into your Hootsuite. So use it effectively, efficiently, um, a way for you to see. And it, also a way to catch up with people all in one place in different um, social media aspects, see different um, Twitter accounts all in one place. You don't have to keep logging in to each Twitter account just to see your mentions and home feed to, to connect with people. 
Okay, and you can add people, reply, into different things in here as well in Hootsuite. So I hope that makes it more efficient for you to set up your social media in Hootsuite. Let's just go right to ping.fm so I can explain that a little bit more if you're confused about what ping.fm does. <clears throat> okay, so here's ping.fm. And this will allow you to post in all your different services right here. Um, you have multiple. You can have a Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. It just puts them all in one place here. So all you have to do is put that in there. And if you want to ping it, it will ping to all these places all at once. Okay, sometimes I don't recommend, you know, putting maybe in Facebook, but putting, putting them all in different places. I have friend feed in there. Um, you know, they have a Twitter feed. There's a lot of different places I don't use a lot regularly, but you'll be out there in most of them. So it will take a little while. If you don't have accounts on this, ping.fm, people will start connecting with you and add you in there and, and get your updates through that ping.fm. Okay? Facebook profile and pages. I'm not going to go into all these. Um, I've had some posts, um, blog posts that I have on how you can affect effectively set those different accounts up. Bitly is pretty neat where you are putting in your links to your businesses and maybe your blog posts into um, the social media. So let's go to maybe Empower Network and um, I want to see my blog. It's to a success. So let's say I want to track my Empower Network blog and see what kind of traffic is really clicking on my on my link here. Um, oh, good, they put in a sticky post on my homepage here. Let's look, take a look, check it out. Okay, so here I want to see who is seeing my homepage here. So I'm gonna what I do up here. Take a look at that rankings already. 5,570. That's some serious traffic. <clears throat> okay, so you copy that and you go into bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, and this is going to track all your links. So I post it in there and it already shortens it, and it's going to start tracking that link now. And then you can copy this, and I think Hootsuite has a way to shorten it, but they use, um, they use a different shortener. They have their own alley shortener, and so you can see your analytics if you shorten your, your UIL using this ow.ly in there. I think there's a way, no, I don't know if there's a way to use Bitly. I think there is a way, but I'm not sure. I just kind of copy it in here because I'm, I don't, uh, there was a problem with Ali for a little while. It was outsourced in a different country, and someone held on to all those accounts. It was it was kind of strange on how they were tracking the URL. So I've moved to Bitly. It, no matter what you use, what other shortener, be consistent in using the same shortener so you can be able to compare your tracking on your different websites. So here's my website, um, and then you can put a little update. Um, quality leadership for your business. Okay, and then you can schedule it out, use different Twitters, um, pages, you know, whatever. Okay, and I want to send it out. Then I want to go back to Bentley and kind of see um, all my clicks. You can kind of have it here. I think you can analyze them up here as well. So now analyzing my clicks, pretty neat. I can over 20 clicks per day in several days. I have some low days, you know, happens. My goal is to get over 20 clicks on all my links every day, a minimum. So I'm working on it. I've, I may hit several 20 clicks a day. And this is not all from, you know, one link. So you can see 
for analyzing your URLs here, you can see where it's coming from. The US, if it's direct link from Facebook, from Twitter, different places. I think this is um, Twitter. I'm mainly using this for Twitter anyways. Right, is in Hootsuite. I'm scheduling it out. Um, you can click on what days, what day you got most links on and see how many times it was clicked out. So, um, and Better Networker, I put a bit.ly link and it got clicked five times. You can tell how many times it got clicked, see which ones were more effective in there. Okay, so we learned about Bitly and how to track your links that you're putting out on their, your blog. And so let's go back to our boot camp and see if we're done. <laughs> now, um, using Skype has been efficient and very helpful to me. I know a lot of people have different opinions about Skype. I connect with different people in different countries a lot easier using Skype for free chat voice and you can um, share screens that way as well. Very easy to see each other's screen if you're having troubles. Um, knowing how to do something, setting all this up, right? Connect with me, Alicia.Stringer, and I will add you to the chat group mastermind, the Empower Network. And if you have any problems doing something, always ask your questions. That's another resource for you. You can also record different interviews with some people, have an on-screen um, record function as well using Skype. So I re recommend you check out the Empower Network. Go to 2asuccess.com. You are going to be able to create a monthly residual income using this. Also, of course, upfront income because you can convert prospects into your business. And to do that, it's just $25 to use the Empower Network. And so I will go back over here to Empower Network. This is the blog you can get for $25. Watching this video will explain everything. So you just click on that. And the um, every person you bring in for $25, you make 100% of it, setting up a merchant account. If you don't have a merchant account and you're in another country, you can set it up through PayPal. They're still working on merchant accounts internationally. Um, another thing, oh, for every 25 person you bring in, the second person goes up to the upline. And you will get some bonuses from me from um, the upline I have, been, I have been in. I've created a review here. I'll probably make another tab for just the Empower Network so you can make sure you understand how this works. <coughs> Some of the bonuses include um, Lawrence Tam has a Project Mayhem, and he goes through exactly how this entire system is set up, and just a nutshell of how you build your business using this blog, and using it through the internet, um, doing SEO traffic, making it automated. Another bonus he has is he's created another affiliate sites using Amazon. So we'll get, go through basic training of how to create your domain, how to host it, how to put these products on there, and how to um, promote it to, in order to create these sales from Amazon. And my bonus is my personal leadership intensive learning the success strength vision formula where you will go through mindset and how to create high ticket offers, unique offers for your business. And if you want to create an ebook, how, how do you go about doing that? Um, we will go through all that and some different marketing um, with focus on how you market to specific niches on there. And always how to test and fine tune things to keep improving it. So you can click on this link to get started. You can click on this to join and get started just for $25. It's amazing on how you can move up with $100, do the same thing for every person that pays $100, you make $100.
and you pass up the 2nd, 4th, and 6th sale, and then every 5th, so the 11th, and so forth, on the, the streams of income. <coughs> All right, so let's make sure we accomplish everything here. When people come into the Empower Network, you are able to get their phone numbers. When they first come in, they just put in their email address, and you're able to connect with them in, the, in your list, in your Aweber that we went through earlier, and you are able to connect with them in different ways. In order to really connect with them, um, they want to take it to the next level and make $25 on every person that comes in, you get their phone number, create a relationship with them, and you can send them whatever you want. That Aweber is creating your own list. It's not going to be your primary list as well. <clears throat> so you can promote and tell them more about you, promote them about your business. If you want to put, make some more profit sales with more affiliate systems, promote those through your list as well. So you're going to get automatic exposure to your primary MLM. You can send the messages to what you're passionate about if you're primary um, business. With the Empower Network, you're able to connect with a community of people that uses this that uses this blog system. You're going to get mentorship. It's all through the Fast Start training, and I'll show you a little bit about that. And it's a personal converting blog, oh, I it, as well because it's already start and have authority, and it's ranked in the system. So let me see if I can. Um, log in here. The fast start training. See, they make this so easy. Well, all I have to do is click over here and go to your fast start training. Oh, I might need to refresh this. <coughs> the images went away. I think something shot. Um, this is the. Um, the first page, but it's not showing you all the links. Oh, sorry. I'll get there. Okay, let's go into the inner circle members. And it's going to log me in. <coughs> and now you just click on Fast Start Training when you first get in. Make sure you have your merchant account set up. And here is all the training ready for you, which is the $25. How, how to blog, how to market, um, some new member coaching, um, power power, and so forth. Okay, so there are trainings in here with videos, and you can take the lesson, as well as, if you scroll up, there is scroll up to the a way for you to print off the core checklist of what to do. So it's all written out for you as well. Um, I think that gives you a good fast start training on how, how this works and how the blog works. Okay, so we, your homework. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Take action, right? You got to apply what you just learned. Go to 2A Success and your, you know, you have to enter your name, just your email, and make 100% commissions. Set up your browser, set up your Gmail, set up your Google Voice, your calendar, your social media, Skype, and share with me anything you've learned that you didn't know before here on Facebook. And stay tuned for the next day. Have a wonderful day. Bye.